I think the thing that I would emphasize, and this really became clear to me in my own reporting, um, one of the big differences between the rise of the religious right, you know, talking, you know, mid to late 1970s, Jerry Falwell, moral majority, the whole deal, relative, you know, to 50 years later where we are now, there are some similarities, obviously, uh, in terms of how they talk about things. Actually, there are some really striking similarities in how they talk about, you know, public education, how they talk about uh, the, this kind of secularizing society, how they talk about government coming after religion, things like that. What's what's really striking as a difference when you think about those similarities, I think the big difference is that, you know, 50 years ago, most of the people involved in that movement who were really like um, who were really sowing a, a, a deep fear in the minds of Christians in this country, they didn't really believe what they were selling. Right. In other words, they were they were saying that the apocalypse is nigh, that, um, you know, beware, this country is about to collapse. The secular humanist progressives are going to are going to take us over and they're going to banish the almighty from public life. and And you and your family and your church aren't safe. They said those things to gain influence, to gain political power, to raise a lot of money to build a bigger and bigger platform, but most of them didn't actually believe their own rhetoric. I mean, we know that from, uh, from, uh, contemporaneous statements. We know it from interviews after the fact, we know it from memoirs that have been written. Uh, I I've talked with people who were involved in that movement who, you know, it was all just sort of a, it was a bit of a ruse, right? If you fast forward 50 years, I do think that today, a lot of folks really do believe it. And and that helps to explain the Trump phenomenon in a way, because um, this talk of, you know, the barbarians are at the gates and America is on its last legs and desperate times call for desperate measures and the ends justify the means. Well, suddenly, if that's the way you're thinking, then it starts to make sense how someone like Donald Trump could become the champion of this movement that he has nothing in common with. I mean, in fact, I have, you know, I quote people in the book, Mike Huckabee and Robert Jeffress and others who talk about how the reason that Trump became their champion was because he didn't play by their rules. He didn't read their sacred texts. He, he wasn't restrained by their same, you know, kind of um, religious strictures, if you will. And, and that freed him to, to fight for their community their under siege community, as they would describe it, in ways that nobody else could.